This is an interview with Mr. Ellis Potter on, no on November 12, 1982, in his home in Sherwood Hills. Mr. Potter, would you tell us where you were born? I, I was born in Morrison, Illinois. And when, what year? In 1890. Okay, thank you. Now you can say. Uh, where did you take your architectural training? University of Illinois in Champaign. And what brought you to Madison? I assume uh, you came I, right after school. You came I graduated in 1916 and jobs were very scarce. There was an architect's agency in Chicago that would try to get you a job for your first two week salary. I contacted them and uh, received five different offers, one of which was uh, with Jim Law in Madison. So uh, I uh, wrote him a letter telling him that I was interested in working in a small office where there was a good learning opportunity and a chance for advancement which I would be glad to do anything you wanted. That was a two-page letter. I got a telegram, come at once. Do you mind my asking you what your first two weeks salary amounted to? $20 a week. Oh, oh, 20, so $20, a, $20 a week. $20 a week. And so the agency got $40 yeah. for finding you the job. And I was married, uh, let's see, three months later. Mm -hmm. Twenty dollars a week. How many um, how many architect firms were there? Architectural firms in Madison at that time? Oh, I would guess six or seven, mm -hmm. maybe eight. And they were all busy. Oh no, not too busy. There wasn't a great deal of building mm -hmm. in a few years there. Well, after the First World War, I assume after the uh, war was over and the boom times came. That's of course when many of the residences in, in Charlotte Hills were built, weren't they? Oh no, uh, Charlotte Hills. I, I built in 31 and uh, only half of the lots were, were filled up at that time. Uh, but, uh, we did several fine homes in Madison and Maple Bluff, mm -hmm. but they came a little later too, I think. Were most of the homes in Sherwood Hills uh, designed by architects? A large percentage of them. And your yeah. firm did residences as well as public buildings? Yes. We uh, were glad to get residences in the early days mm -hmm. before we could get into the larger work. What, do you have, what, do you know the names of some of those residences that we could, uh, yes. pictures of some of them. Oh, yeah. Crowley, a home near uh, Edgewood. Uh, oh, yes, that beautiful place. Yeah, the Harry Manchester home in Maple Bluff. Uh, Chauncey Blake home in Madison. Congregational Church, Parsonage in Madison. Is that on Bascom Place? I can't be sure. Mm -hmm. Well, then you built the uh, Congregational Church in Did you build the church? 1929, yes. right? Oh, yes, this is on Bascom Place. Did you uh, work with a particular construction firm, or were you? No, uh, competitive bids always. Oh, always. For houses as well as for? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, this was Jim Law's home that President Burge eventually bought. Beautiful. That was on Van Heights. That's yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Van Heights. That's that. right around the corner from our old house. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful house. Yeah. That's it. And then you built on Summit, 
your firm, I know, built the Sloan House. Were you yes. uh, involved yes. in that? Yeah. We're, we're the elevator runner. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Neff home in uh, Maple Bluff and the William Winterbull home. Oh, that, yes. Uh, uh, let's see. That must be on the corner. Yeah. For the corner Fala. of uh, Allen Street and yeah, Van Dyke. Yeah, that's right. Phil the Follett lived there. I Phil remember. Phil the mm -hmm. bought it. I've been there a number of times. Oh, it was a beautiful place. Oh, yes. They, they, they were splendid. Uh, Beautifully designed, and the Horner Frank Horner residence in Florida Hills, and here's Jim Law's second home. I know where that is too. That's on the corner of Pros Prospect and uh, Van Heys. Yeah, right. just, uh, these are <coughs> these are some of the famous houses of the Heights that we just had our annual visit to. Well, well. Not these particular houses, but the uh -huh. area. The poly. There's a wide diversity in in the heights of uh, different architectural styles. Oh yes. Um, many of the your firm, I think, was perhaps built more traditional. Uh, would you say they were traditional yes. or Eastern or mm -hmm. English inspired? <laughs> I don't know what one calls that kind of architecture. Yeah. French provincial. Yeah, but it was. Um, um, most well, be, not all before the some of the prairie styles began to come in. Where there, there were yeah. some of those in the Heights, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, we lived, a nice mixture. That's, we lived for many years in the Marling House at the corner of Prospect and Badger. Well, this is beautiful. Dr. Pori oh, House in Shoreville. Shoreville Hills. That's beautiful. That's a marvelous book. Oh <laughs> yes, this was published in. Thirty-seven. Mm. <laughs> so, so some, some of our early work then. That was in your midway in your career then, wasn't it? Well, that was uh, not quite midway, but rather, rather early in the career. <laughs> but, um, uh, tell us a little about the public buildings that you worked on. The, well, the well uh, Masonic Temple. When did you do that? Yes, that was uh, finished in about 25, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tenney Building, the Wisconsin Power and Light Building, the Manchester Building. The main store, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Congregation Church, West High. And uh, then in the university, we did the social studies building, commerce building, uh, about a nine-story addition on uh, biology, and uh, was a hard time finding it here, I guess. So uh, we. Uh, very careful building, uh, poultry building. What's involved in uh, designing a building like a poultry building? Well, you have to understand a lot about poultry. Well, <laughs> Dr. Berg was uh, the professor of poultry. Mm -hmm. and he knew just exactly what he wanted, so there was no problem. We had to. It was easy to give him what he wanted, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was marvelous to work with. Does that building still stand? Oh, yes. Very busy. That's on the Ag Campus. Yeah, Ag Campus. Mm -hmm. And that dirty building is on the Ag Campus, too. What about uh, building a school or there, uh, like uh, West High? Is there a certain kind of politics involved in uh, getting those? Well, you have to work with committees uh, different from working with an individual. Yeah. And uh, different people have different ideas, and you have to try to work things out to satisfy them 
in the best manner. What's your, did you have any kind of relationship with Frank Lloyd Wright and the, the Wright Taliesin or anything? No. You were competitors in a way. Hardly. Mm -hmm. uh, we had only one contact with him, and that was the uh, fraternity house. We had a contract to design that. We designed 13 fraternities and sororities on the Wisconsin campus. Frank Lloyd Wright wasn't doing much business in Madison ever, was he? No. He never did it. Sullivan and Elmsley had done the, uh, the big fraternity house up in the Heights by, I forget what year that was, that was done. Well, are you thinking of the Louis Sullivan house? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Sigma yeah. Chi house. Mm -hmm. uh, Elmsley did, uh, house here in Charlotte, really. I thought, too, that uh, our reports have it that he was uh, greatly involved in the Sullivan house, uh, the Sullivan, uh, Louis Sullivan fraternity house, but you're not sure that that's uh, I don't so. think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. They did, uh, I can't think of a man, of a man uh, with Ansley did the home for here in Sherwood Hills. But uh, Claude and Stark, were they contemporaries yeah, oh of yours? Oh, yes, they were. They did many houses, too, didn't they? Yes, they, they had quite a practice. And uh, Alvin Small, was he of your yes. generation, generation yes, too? Yes, yes, I knew them well. It's clear. I don't, I don't know, I think we've asked you when you retired, or did you? Just sort of <laughs> gradually you don't retire. Have to retire. Well, uh, let's see what I retired. In 1867, <coughs> Nystrom and I were the only two left in the firm, and Nystrom's health wasn't good. And he came to me one day and he said he thought he'd like to retire. And uh, I had never thought of retiring, but I was 77 years old. <laughs> and <clears throat> my son had been working with us for several years. And I thought, why, why don't I retire too and let him have it? Mm -hmm. uh, so I did, and he formed a new firm that's now Potter, Lawson, and Pulaski. And they are running wild. They have all the work they can handle. They do a lot of school building, don't they? 
Oh, yes, and some university buildings and hospitals and the uh, funerary, you know, oh, that yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Heavens, four or five new big buildings. Thirty-one million dollar contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a contract for the new forty-one million dollar jail at Portage. Uh, they're doing big work. I'm sorry, what is the name of that, that firm? Potter, Lawson, and Pulowski. Oh, yes. That, uh, and they built, they built a, a new million dollar office building out uh, uh, on the west side. Was your son educated at the University of Illinois as well? He's a Minnesota graduate. Minnesota. Was your father an architect? No, my father was a carpenter. Oh, well, that's well, a good probably, beginning. Yeah, he probably designed many houses. Uh, no, he uh, he was not a contractor. He worked for somebody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with uh, Minnesota and Illinois both having good schools of architecture, did it not seem necessary for Wisconsin to have one? Is that did you feel uh, that or otherwise? <clears throat> well, uh, it took a long time to get one started in Wisconsin, but uh, they have a nice school in Milwaukee now. Mm -hmm. Yes. But of course, there are a lot of good uh, architectural schools. Michigan has a very good one. And Iowa City, Ames, has a good one. So Madison didn't really, didn't really need, need one. one. No, we used to get uh, apple quality of glass in it. But it's nice to have one in Milwaukee. Yes. Are the, uh, the licensing uh, requirements and the apprenticeship and the, the same as they were when you were, or have they changed? Quite similar, mm -hmm. but uh, there is a difference. Uh, there's a good story there. Uh, on the fall that I was a senior, they had an architectural exam. There were 42 old gray-haired men taking it, and uh, two seniors in the university were allowed to take it. You weren't the only two graduating. We're, we, we were in the fall of our senior year. Uh -huh. hmm. And uh, 41 took it, nine passed, and the two seniors in the university passed. Uh, nowadays, you have to have, I believe, three years office practice after passing the exam before they can get registered. A licensed mm -hmm. architect. Yes. Sort of an, uh, not quite an apprenticeship, but a little bit like an apprenticeship. Yes, that's right. Does this it, make sense to you? Or did it seem to you that was a good idea? It's, it's a good idea. A, a graduate has a lot of things to learn yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, two years training won't do him any harm. <laughs> Side two of tape one, Ruth Doyle interviewing uh, Mr. Ellis Potter. Uh, Mr. Potter, can you, can you remember which, or do you remember which was your favorite job that you ever did? The most enjoyable experience? Oh, I. That would be hard to say. I am proud of them all. And one thing, in enumerating those other jobs, I didn't think to mention our Coliseum here in Madison. Oh, yes. That, that's one that I'm very proud of. And you were involved in the designing of the I was a senior architect. Mm -hmm. How long the job, did, how long did it take you to design that for the satisfaction of it? Oh. I was on the county board in those days. I remember that. Well, uh, 
missed the work nearly a year uh, on that, and that was a tough one. Had a and terrible uh, problem with the roof, I remember. No. Designing a roof that would... No. No. The trouble that you're thinking of was uh, there was a plastic... waterproofing on the roof mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, it just came loose oh yeah the, uh, it, there was no structural problem at all uh, it was just a membrane that came loose in a place or two but uh, no problem well, it's certainly been a marvelously useful building, hasn't it? Oh, yes, I think the city loves it. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting to the place where that's the place where it may be earning money now. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh -huh. I'm sure it is. They, they seem to have it filled up most yes. every night with something. Yes. yes. All the different kinds of events that you can have in it. Uh, Rodeos and uh, hockey and basketball and horse shows. And yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's a marvelous thing for the city. And it draws widely. People 40, 50 miles away. The Tenney Building was quite a thing when it was built, wasn't it? It's a beautiful building. Beautiful. And it was taller than anything else around. Yes, I guess it was. And the Masonic Temple is all very nice. Mm -hmm. We uh, we did work all over the state of Wisconsin, and uh, the largest building we ever did was a 15-story office building in Springfield, Illinois, for the Central Illinois Public Service Company. It was by far the largest building in Springfield at the time, may still be. And we had an office building in St. Joe, Missouri, and uh, we did a lot of work for Carl Adams and Collier in Dubuque. Did you do the not only the original West High but the junior high school edition? Yes. The West High. Yes, sir. Did you do schools in other parts of the uh, of the country? Lots of schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the uh, P. J. Jacobs High School in uh, Stephen Point and. Uh, over several other high schools and lots of grade schools. Mm -hmm. We did well over a hundred schools. What's involved for you at the time they hire you to do a building? You first have to spend months in consultation, I suppose. Don't you? Uh, well, maybe not months, but uh, a month or two. Mm -hmm. And find out what they, what they want, and then uh, study the site and prepare preliminary studies for approval. When, when you were, how big did your firm become when you were uh, still active in it? You had drafts well, and other architects? On two occasions, we got up to over 30. One unusual project we had was the housing at the uh, Badger Ordinance, 1,200 free fabs. Mm -hmm. uh, we still uh, hear a lot about these things that Governor Drake has yeah. lived in. Uh, 1,200 free fabs and uh, uh, a couple of blocks of, of uh, building stores and uh, post office and barber shops and so on and a recreation building 
And we had to do it overnight. I suppose. That, that was done in 42. Uh, and they were building uh, the Badger Ordnance, and, and we were preparing places for the working people to live. And... Uh, Who prefabbed houses in those days? Oh, there were bids from several different firms. They were made, building a lot of temporary buildings for the War Department, I suppose, and... Uh, yes, well, I suppose people who would build uh, mobile homes were in about the same kind of work. Mm -hmm. Well, there were lots of famous people eventually lived there, like Governor Dreyfus and Governor Oh, did Reddy. Dreyfus live there? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Took the bus to Madison. I there didn't know people. that. <laughs> there are lots of people. Justice Heffernan and his family lived there. Well. John Reynolds and his family lived there. Well, well, well. And uh, oh, any number of <clears throat> famous people lived in those houses. Yeah, and then after the... Sometime after uh, the war people uh, gave them up, uh, married students out there, mm -hmm. you know, before they built this married students place here in Charlotte Hills. Yeah, it was a long ride and a miserable <laughs> place, but I can remember yeah, going out there several times to visit friends who were in graduate school or law school or medical school. About 39 was out there, if I remember right in the hilly road in a rickety old bus. <laughs> How many houses in Sherwood Hills would you say that you uh, designed? Oh, maybe six or eight. Mm -hmm. Were you involved at all in the Sherwood Hills Association? That I'm not sure that's what it's called, but the, the group that bought the land and got the plans going uh, with the oh, no, no, that, uh, uh, okay. There was a Mendota Heights Association yes, first, wasn't there? Yes, first, and then, um, And first, a College Hills Association, and then it all came yes. together, didn't it? But I'm trying to think. Jack, John McKenna oh. mm -hmm. uh, took over and had the thing surveyed and uh, divided into lots and so on. John McKenna did all of that. And uh, after that first week that you mentioned, My lot from McKenna in 1922. We were we drove uh, when we were coming out here up Lake Mendota Drive, and I'd be interested to know what you think about some of the modern houses that have gone in around here. The well, some of them are quite interesting. Would you design houses like that? If the uh, Well, I'll tell you. When we got in the larger work, we quit designing dwellings. Mm -hmm. There, there was no profit in it. It was just a living. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bigger jobs were profitable. And uh, I. I can't say when the firm does its last dwelling. It would be a long, long time ago. I suppose that the houses, even though they're terribly expensive now to build, yes. there probably still isn't a great profit in it for the architect, is there? Material. No, you see, you have to make a, a good set of drawings for every project 
and a good set of specifications for every project. And you have to supervise it. Well, you can do a fraction of amount of work for uh, a large job that might cost the same as a dozen dwellings. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's so obvious. Yes, uh, a million dollar job is doesn't involve as much time as a as a flock of little jobs. Mm -hmm. So you have to do the same work for each little job. Yes, you there. have to go through the whole rigmarole for every one of them. Mm -hmm. And they still do that. Well, that's the only way it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> what about condominiums, Mr. Potter? Have you done no, any of those? I don't know anything about it. They came along after you? Yeah. We never had one. I suppose maybe the new firm may remember one before long. <laughs> well, there's just so, so many of them being built everywhere, there's no... Yes. And it does seem to me that despite the so-called slowdown in the construction business, that the west side of Madison out towards Westtown and beyond is just... Uh, buildings are going up every day. Uh, yes, this town is just growing out of its clothes. You know, <laughs> Pretty near to Verona, and pretty near to Sun Prairie, and pretty near to Stoughton. Mm -hmm. Holy smoke, you go to the outskirts, it's just appalling what, what you see. An enormous number of office buildings, and they seem to be occupied. Yeah. Small, rather small office. Small office building, yeah. yeah. How do you account for that? Well, people have to have a place to live, and I suppose they get the most convenient place they have not too far from the city. But well, we were lucky as a deuce that we got this lot. I'm only four miles from the capital. Mm -hmm. but, you're, but you're in the suburbs too. Sure. And a blessing. Mm -hmm. So much better than being in the city. We think the city is very nice, but... Yes, but we have our own organization. Mm -hmm. And we get the things we want, and uh, no argument. Yeah. What about your relationships with the building trades? I'd be interested to know what, uh, did you have particular carpenters and masons and tile setters that you worked with? I can only think of one lousy firm, two lousy firms mm -hmm. that we got into all of them and couldn't help ourselves. Uh, they were terrible. Uh, they didn't want to do a good job. And we had to fight them all the time. And uh, they were desperate for it. Uh, we knew they were bad, but we had to take them. They were low bidders mm -hmm. on public work. But uh, we. We knew the contractors, and uh, the rest of them were competent and good. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the whole incident. We, uh, at high school, and uh, man by the name of it, Contractor Neil Johnson came down from Winona, uh, Minnesota. And uh, we got along together just like honeys. Everything was perfect. 
on the job was pretty well along. So, Nels, how, how did you ever happen to bid this job? I said, uh, don't you know that lots of architects uh, have bad reputations? He laughed. Before I did that job, I went down to Madison and stayed two days and inquired about you guys. <laughs> That, that was, I, I had a bit more news about that episode than some of the he, he, he was a smart guy and a good one. Somebody told me one time that you couldn't, and for many years, maybe even now, be a bricklayer in Madison unless you belonged to one of four Italian families. They were all related to each other. <laughs> the I, I don't. I don't know about that, but uh, uh, some uh, contractors who started as bricklayers became good contractors. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, I have a heck of a time. Somebody, uh, Tony Gignano? I think Tony Gignano, who was a contractor on the Coliseum, started as a common workman. Mm -hmm. And his daughter is running the firm now. I've heard about that. She's nice. <laughs> Did Tony Gignano go to jail, prison for something at one time? Oh my gosh, no. I shouldn't put that on the tape, should I? No, I, I, I wouldn't think that. No, Tony is a swell guy. He's still around, I guess, isn't he? Oh, yes. When you were working on, particularly in the big public works, you provided supervision of the uh, contractor, I suppose, at all. Well, always. And you could get into some disagreements with contractors. Uh, no. Uh, rarely, uh, we worked along with them and they worked along with us and, uh, and uh, things usually worked out. I can only think of one difficulty. And a lot of stonework uh, that uh, wasn't according to detail. I had to reject it when I was superintending for the state. And that, that subcontractor uh, said one time, I, I could kill you. <laughs> but he didn't. But he didn't. He, he, uh, Peabody was a uh, state architect at that time, and when he found out what was going on, he set that guy right in the heart of it. Mm -hmm. He had to do it. 